all those lights are bright. Hey, thank you, Pat, for that kind uh, introduction. Um, yeah. Just wonderful. And thank Mega Talk. Thank you so much for those kind words. I cannot think of a better partner in a better city to be in. You all are fantastic partners, and we just thank you for your support very much. So you can sense uh, from Pat's enthusiasm for our work at Langley and what NASA is, is, does across the agency. And it's really that spirit, it's a big part of uh, what we're here to celebrate and the people that do it. It's the fuel that helps NASA achieve so many great things and, and those great things we've been doing for 100 years. So it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to the symposium, recognizing NASA Langley Research <coughs> Center, its past, its present, and its future. As Pat said, we're going to reach our 100th birthday on Monday. So think of that, 100 years. Uh, just let that soak in. It, it, it doesn't beat 407 years, but uh, it's still pretty, still pretty impressive. Uh, and, and for me personally, as Pat said, I've uh, been uh, over a third of that 100 years, which kind of makes me feel old sometimes, but also makes me feel, feel very excited. So I mean, it's such a pleasure to be part of the great things we do. So and I'm really glad that we're able to celebrate this birthday in, in, in such a big way. We've had tremendous events, starting with the parade uh, and numerous events throughout the year, kind of culminating uh, this week with the symposium and gala. And then we have a little celebration on center uh, for the official birthday on Monday. So it's been fantastic. It takes a big group of people to pull all, all of this together. We've had a tremendous team working all these things. They've done a fantastic job. So let's just take a minute to give them a round of applause. So we're glad uh, that all of you are here. And I think we're doing a live stream. So those out in the audience watching us that way, we're glad you're with us too. I got one piece of info this morning. I'm not a Twitter expert. So if I screw it up, I apologize in advance, but I was told that hashtag NASA Langley 100 on Twitter was uh, number four in the country and nation over the last day. So that's, I, I'm thinking I made it work. That's, uh, that's a good thing. I'm, I'm told, I'm not, a Twitter, I'm not a Twitter expert, but I'm told that's a pretty good thing. So that, that's just fantastic. So I think uh, we can all agree, when you hit your 100th birthday, it is natural to kind of glance over your shoulder and, lo and look what you've done over those 100 years. Uh, it's useful. Uh, we can build a better tomorrow by remembering lessons from yesterday. And at NASA Langley, we do have such a rich history to explore. I could say, it says here in my notes, I could spend hours, I could spend days, I could probably spend weeks uh, talking about all the things. So I'm, I'm going to hit a few here, and then as we go through the next three days, you'll hear more about these things. Today is kind of focused on the history, so you'll hear more about those and through the various panels, things we're doing now and going to be doing in the future. But let me hit just a few right now. Starting with the earliest days, back in 1917, in, in those first few years, aeronautics research at Langley served as an incubator for ideas and technologies that really made American uh, aviation take off uh, and fly, as historian Jim Hansen wrote. Research here improved American fighters and bombers uh, during World War II. It really led, helped lead to the Allied victories in World War II. Uh, the Mercury 7, the original uh, astronauts, started their training here at NASA Langley. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, other Apollo astronauts learned to uh, land on the moon by training at what's now called the Landing and Impact uh, Facility. The world's first transonic wind tunnels were built here. The area rule, one of the keys for practical supersonic flight, was conceived by Langley researcher Dick Whitcomb. Um, the center led the first successful robotic landing on Mars, the Viking 1 mission, which uh, snapped humanity's first photos of the red planet. So just amazing. If I move up a little in history, get up in the 2000s, I'll just quickly hit a few highlights there. X-43 or HyperX, two world records, Mach 7 and Mach 10 flights, pretty amazing. Uh, development, launch, and over 10 years of successful operations of the Calypso satellite. A really great international partnership. You'll hear some more about that uh, tomorrow, so fantastic. Development and several successful flight te tests of HIADS, hypersonic inflatable uh, decelerator. Hypersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerator. I got too many acronyms in my head here. 
but it's tremendous, and that's ultimately going to help us land humans on Mars one day. Uh, the very successful environmentally responsible aviation project just wrapped up a few years ago. Really made some tremendous advancements that will help shape the future of commercial air transportation. And so there are many, many more. If if you were involved in ones I didn't mention, uh, don't worry. You'll probably hear it uh, during the rest of the symposium. Like I said, you could talk for days and days about some of the amazing things. But let me say right up front, uh, going through that, this isn't a eulogy. Okay, I'm not standing up here, the, the center, and this isn't, I'm not eulogizing all the things we've done in the past. Uh, we've got an amazing and bright uh, future. We're not some dusty artifact. It's a thriving institution that has adapted and evolved to meet the challenges of tomorrow. Thanks to a robust revitalization program, championed by one of my predecessors here, uh, we'll be opening the Katherine G. Johnson Computational Research Facility here in a couple months. An amazing place. The whole story around Katherine Johnson and that group of women, the West End Computing Group. Uh, I see some of the modern figure pictures on the wall over there. If you don't know that story, go see the movie. Read the book, Hidden Figures. Go see the movie. Just an amazing story that that all happened here. Uh, so that'll be opening in September. If you get out on the center today, you'll see a lot of construction going on. We got the new measurement systems lab under construction. We broke ground. Did you, you were there as a frequent flyer. You were there. I'm, I'm trying to remember when that was uh, a few months ago. Uh, amazing thing. I like to call it our first new lab of the second hundred years. It's going to be amazing. Uh, state-of-the-art facility, over 175,000 square feet of state-of-the-art lab facility uh, aimed at uh, measurement systems that contributes to both our aeronautics work, our science work, our space exploration work. So we're really looking forward to, uh, to seeing that come online. But that's not all we've been doing. Uh, just back in February, we launched SAGE-3, looking at, and it's sitting and operating on the International Space Station right now, taking data, looking at the recovery of the ozone layer. Fantastic. The Space Launch System, NASA's heavy lift launch vehicle that's going to take us out of low Earth orbit and beyond. We've got models in our wind tunnels right now, testing that. The Orion crew capsule and uh, the Boeing CST-100, we're testing at the landing impact facility. Uh, those two things, the Boeing CST is part of the commercial crew pro program that are going to take astronauts back to, uh, in low Earth orbit, back to the International Space Station. We're also making progress in efforts to allow supersonic commercial uh, passenger flight over land. And a research area we've been working on for a long time, uh, and we're going to start an explaining of that and actually measure the population's response to minimizing that sonic boom. Really excited about that. The Langley team uh, is uh, on Series F and 6, a continuity measurement to measure the radiation's Earth budget. We packed that up. We just completed thermal vac testing, uh, hoping uh, we're going to be launching this fall out at Vandenberg. So we're keeping an eye on that. So. Just a lot of amazing things going on. We're also working a lot on unmanned aerial systems. We've actually turned uh, part of the campus into an unmanned aerial uh, test site. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things you read in the news, people are looking at how you fly drones in an urban environment. Well, I've got a little mini urban environment right there. I've got buildings, I've got people, I've got cars driving around. So we've, gotten, we've worked with the FAA and our partners over at the Air Force Base to get approval to do that. We've expanded it recently, and we've just been doing some flights. So that's really, really cool. So um, you might say, hey, uh, how has Langley been able to maintain that level of excellence over 100 years? You look at all those amazing things uh, that we've done. Um, and, and it's really, you know, how do these researchers continue to push those technology boundaries? Well, there's really no secret recipe. It's about, all about nurturing the enthusiasm, the passion of our people. When it gets right down to it, it's all about the people. They make those things happen. It's about preserving the spirit of discovery. New ideas aren't manufactured. They're input from minds and men of the great uh, women, men and women we have out there. Give them the freedom, support, and tools they need, and they will deliver. We've seen that for 100 years. I have no doubts we'll see that for the next 100 years. I've seen it time and time again. We're so lucky to have so many bright, dedicated people working at the center. We've got about 3,400 civil servants and contractors 
And they're upholding the high standards set by figures who helped make history at our center. Max Monk, John Stack, Dick Whitcomb, John Hobel, Catherine Johnson. Actually, if you get a chance, go out the back. Uh, two years ago, yeah, about two years ago, we started the NASA NAC uh, Langley Hall of Honor. Uh, we had the first class two years ago. We just inducted the second class. We have all their pictures out there in the back. Take a chance, walk back there, and look at some of the amazing uh, people on their wall. I, I think you'll be impressed. Uh, today, we're focused on extending this tradition of excellence and building on that foundation. And I'm truly honored and humbled to be leading this fine group. I tell people all the time, I got the coolest job on the planet. I use that line a lot, uh, and I use it because I really believe it. Uh, it it's, it's really hard to describe the sense of pride I get driving at the gate every day. So this symposium will help us all grasp 100 years of accomplishments, breakthroughs, while also opening up a window on what's to come. But we're, we're fortunate, as Pat said, to have so many thoughtful, experienced uh, speakers here today. We've got great panels, great speakers, all three days. So I, I think you'll be uh, very impressed. So in closing, I hope you enjoy this symposium. I hope you gain valuable insights into what we've accomplished. And I hope you walk away with some of the excitement we feel as we work to pursue the important goals of NASA. Again, thanks for joining us as we applaud the spirit that's generated really 100 years of amazing accomplishments, not just for NASA, for the country, for the world. It's been truly amazing. I've been saying this all year. The centennial is not just a celebration for NASA alone. It's not just a celebration for NASA. It's a celebration for aerospace. It's a celebration for anyone who dreams of a bigger, brighter future. So with that, again, thank you for being here this morning. There's lights are awful hot up here. So like I'm uh, sweating. I am because it's awful hot up here. So, so now it's my distinct pleasure to introduce uh, our next speaker, who's going to give some introductory remarks. Uh, it's somebody who knows NASA Langland very well. Uh, before being called to Washington to serve at NASA headquarters, she served as NASA's Langley's director for nine years. Uh, and before that, she served as manager of the International Space Station Research Program down at Johnson Space Center. And before that, she spent 15 years down at Kennedy Space Center, uh, working on the systems and flight tests for flight elements that are now actually on the International Space Station. Her many awards include the 2015 Senior Executive Service Presidential Distinguished Rank Award and the 2006 Presidential Meritorious Executive Rank Award. Please welcome me, uh, join me in welcoming Lisa Rowe. Well, thanks very much, Dave. I really appreciate that introduction. And, uh, and thanks to Pat and, and also Mayor Tuck, all the great ser service that uh, Hampton has provided over the years has been just amazing. I'm honored to get to point out a very special uh, person in the audience. A NASA legend and an American hero is with us today. Uh, let's have an, a round of applause for Dr. Buzz Aldrin, Apollo astronaut, and one of the to be here with all of you celebrating. It's been great celebrating this whole year. We've had just some, some great things that have been going on to celebrate the 100th anniversary, and, I, and I've been, it's been great to be a part of all of it. Um, my time leading Langley was truly a high point of my career. Uh, I got to have the best job in the world prior to Dave and, uh, and prior to, after, you know, Jers was in the middle there, so uh, so uh, so uh, it's 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 uh, it's it was great to do that. Yeah, whatever. It, it's, it's great to do that. I hear about it. And, uh, but uh, but certainly Langley will always be home. And uh, and this center is named for Samuel Pierpoint Langley, a titan of 19th century science. As such, it honors the work that so many people did in that pioneering time to get us to the point where Langley was needed 
in the early part of the 20th century to focus on the grand new technology of aviation. It's a tradition we carry on today in the cutting edge air and space work that takes place every day in this unassuming community. 1917 was a very different time. We just entered World War I. The first woman representative had just joined the US House. Charlie Chaplin was a big film star. And if you wanted to cross the ocean, you took a boat. So uh, we went, but we went in leaps and bounds with Dr. Langley's aerodrome dunking in the Potomac, to the Wright brothers' success, to planes being essential to warfare, to transatlantic flight, to passenger flight, to faster than sound flight. Many have made the parallels between the rapid advances in aviation and the rapid progress we made and continue to make in spaceflight. From a tiny prototype satellite Stunning the world in 1958, to men on the moon a scant 11 years later, to spacecraft launching in the 1970s that now, now, now touch the edge of our solar system, to telescopes and spacecraft peering into other galaxies and finding planets around other stars, and preparations underway to send humans farther into the solar system than we have ever gone before. And this center has been here the whole time, from the time, from the very earliest breakthroughs in flight to rockets that can break the bonds of gravity, Samuel Pierpoint Langley would be amazed with this center, the center that bears his name. He was, after all, a solar physicist, in addition to his work in aeronautics, a multifaceted man, much like this center. I think any of the people here for that any here that were here for that groundbreaking 100 years ago would be equally amazed at what Langley has become, as would those who could only imagine what was next as we transformed from aeronautics center to a key player in our nation's young space program. You simply can't tell the full story of America's adventures in air and space without talking about Langley. The early advances in aeronautics that emerged from the lab helped our nation and the world travel higher, farther, and faster. New Langley designed wind tunnels gave aeronautical engineers the data they needed to improve, giving our nation an edge in the skies that helped to win World War II. America's human space program began at Langley and our nation's first astronauts, the Mercury 7, trained here. You may not, you may not have known that you could simulate the lunar surface in Virginia, but we did it. And, Many trained here, as, as Dr. Bowles uh, acknowledged earlier. Humanity's first successful journey to the surface of Mars, the Viking 1 robotic landing in 1976, also was managed by Langley, as, as also as Dave pointed out. And for anyone that was not alive at that time, it's hard to describe how powerful and emotional it was to see the amazing landscape and color for the very first time. It really transported us there and I think planted the seeds that we're still nurturing. It made us realize that we had to get there with humans. I was delighted to be director here during the successful landing of the Mars Science Laboratory, Curiosity, on the Martian surface in 2012. And it used uh, Langley's entry, descent, and landing expertise on instruments that made key measurements for NASA to use in designing systems to land larger masses on the surface of planets like Mars in the future. Atmospheric science work at Langley began in the 1970s and evolved to the point where Langley's expertise in Earth observing technology is recognized around the globe. Langley led Earth science instruments like Calypso that launched in April of 20, 2006 uh, has, has changed our knowledge of the role that clouds and airborne particles play in regulating Earth's weather, climate, and air quality. And it had made its billionth laser shot by 2008 when I was here and is continuing to collect valuable data in space today, 11 years later. Every day at Langley and across our agency, hard work by the NASA team makes a real difference in our country and around the world. And what we do inspires the next generation, injects innovation into our economy, and addresses national challenges. 
Langley's director, uh, Dave Bowles, likes to say this centennial is full, is, is truly everyone's celebration, and he's right. Everyone has been touched in one way or another by the ideas that emerge from this historic laboratory in Virginia. However, just as exciting as our past work, as Dave pointed out, <coughs> is the work being done today. As I mentioned, current projects range from wind tunnel tests of the space launch systems to the development of Orion's launch abort system, to important work and autonomous systems and efforts to muffle sonic booms and restore supersonic flight over land. And Earth Science team at Langley is per preparing the Ceres FM6 instrument to launch later this year, giving researchers another tool to study reflected sunlight and thermal radiation emitted by the Earth. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of the many things that the center has done and continues to do to advance our nation's capabilities and to move us forward towards this bright future. For my part, I also have to put in a plug for women in STEM fields. We're still vastly under, underrepresented, and even though I think that is changing, even though I it, think it's changing slowly, uh, we, we, we really need to keep moving forward with that. The astronauts corps has certainly done an, an amazing job of showcasing a very high profile, profile way how women can excel in STEM fields, and there has been a lot of women scientists, engineers, and other leaders at NASA's, but we continue to need to do more. And it was very gratifying this past year to see all the acclaim for Katherine Johnson and the pioneering women of Langley uh, through the Hidden Figures book and the movie. But there's a lot more stories out there and a lot more yet to be written. And I know Langley will be a part of that, as all of NASA will. All of, uh, um, all of you are headed for some really fascinating discussions, as Dave talked about, over the next couple of days. And I thank you all for attending this. It's, it's going to be thought-provoking, it's going to be interesting, and we're going to all learn new things. And it's my honor and privilege to take part in this celebration. I look forward to sharing and learning with all of you over the next couple of days. So welcome and enjoy and go Langley.